Hello and good evening. My name is Mohammed Zawaitar from Ali Muk University. Today I'm going to be presenting my project idea alongside with Ben and Marks from San Andor University. The basic idea of this project relies on the combination of three aspects, including 3D printing, recycling, and the added interest to come up with unique structures as exactly stated in the mission and vision. In the vision part, transform widely available materials to something unique and inhabit in unexpected locations. In the mission part, we can see that it is stated consuming recycled materials using 3D printing technology to, print, to bring new added value structures to different use. And here is the chart that represents the aspects of the project. We have a plastic pollution in our planet Earth. So while using recycle, recycled plastic in the form of 3D printing, we can come up with a unique structure and state it for different hues. As you can see in the, in the Porter's Five Forces uh, graph that indicates the variety of risks that the business can be subject to, including the bargaining power of suppliers, which are um, mid-sized or mid-range uh, value, because there is many suppliers for the raw materials needed for the project, as well as the meal supplies. The other risk is the threat of new entrant. Let's say it's at the beginning of the establishment of the project is a mid, can be stated as a mid-sized risk as there is not that much of competitors providing the same service that we do. And the threat of substitute is considered to be high because such an idea would be preferred to go once or twice, at max five times a year. Many people prefer to go to regular restaurants. The bargaining power of buyers is considered to be extremely low as buyers have no right to set the pricing strategy of the meals that are provided by the project. The industrial value is considered to be high as previously mentioned, uh, or in comparison with the threat of a new entrant. And as previously mentioned, many people prefer to go to normal or regular restaurants. As for the SWOT an analysis, that stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis. The strength of the business is that it has a variable cost structure that can be easily controlled, unlike the fixed cost structure, as well as the unique, unique customer experience that the business will be providing, unlike the regular restaurants. And then we have the easily of shifting in terms of industry. For example, if the business didn't work out to be as a restaurant, it could be established as a club or a gallery or even be rented as a structure or a place. The weaknesses, one of the weaknesses that the project have is that it can be easily affected by the weather conditions as it can't be operating at stormy or windy weather conditions. The opportunities the project have is the ability to expand as in term of ID, as in term of area or as in term of new branches or to establish new look new branches in many locations the threats is the direct competition at even especially at the beginning of the especially at the beginning of the project establishment even though stormy weather conditions can be very risky it can cause severe damages or injuries to the structure of the business. When we come to economic feasibility study, we can see the cost structure of the project that is classified into three categories. 
the first one and the most important one is the capital expenditures, which are expenditures made only for once at the zero week year and only for once, including the construction costs, the applications, the, line, the license, the approvals, furnitures, and kitchen equipments, all combined at a cost of 77,000 US dollars. The second category is the mid-sized expenditures that are provisions stated to be expended when needed. For example, decorations at the budget of 3,000 US dollars and the furniture and serving equipments and other supplies like 4,000 US dollars. And the third category is the cyclical expenditures, which are expenses needed every month in order to keep the business operating, such as the salaries and wages, the maintenance and the kitchen and meal supplies. The other segment of the economic feasibility study is the profitability ratios. Here we can see a 4.5 return on asset, representing what all the assets of the project have generated of accumulated wealth in term of one year. In comparison with an average of 2.2% of regular restaurants. As you can see here, 8.66 return on equity. You can notice that it is almost the double or less the double of return on asset because by nature equity stands for less than the asset. Representing representing what the original owners of the project and shareholders would achieve of profits, representing how many times would the initial number would be doubled. For example, you paid $1. If you paid $1, it would be doubled by 8.66 times. Here we have the gross profit margin, which is 64% shows the percentage of selling meal, how selling meals would contribute to cover other fixed costs. The figure is not always an index to, of showing how high the project target is. And we can move to laws and regulation. Okay. So, excuse me one second. So for maritime laws and regulations, um, it, we look at basically laws of the sea uh, and how the vessel, uh, how laws are going to affect the vessel in terms of international waters, um, UN convention treaties, and um, economic zones, territorial zones, and whatnot like that. Uh, most specific laws and regulations are kind of applied to um, environmental regulations and pollution laws, which we'll go over in the next slide. Um, a lot of things um, really applying to concepts like this um, go into pollution and environmental regulations and specific laws like that. Um, oh, if you can go back one second. Thanks. Um, basically, the um, the biggest thing we would be looking at is mostly stuff stemming from the 1982 Law of the Sea Convention by the UN. It establishes law and order in the world's oceans, pretty much as well as uh, regulations and rules on how resources are used from the ocean. Um, a big thing that this included when it uh, was released um, is it identified territorial sea zones um, these are within 12 nautical miles of the shore. Um, this is where our vessel would most likely be. Um, there's not a lot of things um, or a specific regulations to worry about within the territorial sea zone when it comes to international waters. Um, past the territorial sea zone is the contiguous zone, which is 24 nautical miles, and the economic exclusive zone, which is 200 nautical miles. Um, so I don't believe our vessel would be going past the territorial zone. Um, so as in for international uh, laws and regulations, it's mostly just conforming and um, 
sticking to um, state regulations off the coast of wherever the vessel would be located at. Um, other things with uh, maritime laws is that the vessel must meet uh, Coast Guard regulations. Uh, that's a very big thing. Uh, they, the, the captain or people on board need to secure a boating license for the vessel. This can be done through the state. Uh, the vessel needs to meet all the requirements for boating permits and licenses. And you can go on to the next slide. So the environmental laws, uh, the first one is the Clearwater Act, which is 42 U.S. Code 7401, which uh, what it does is it protects and enhances the quality of air and, and the nation's air. So basically making sure that the air stays clean and that nothing is uh, polluting it or messing it up. And then the for the second one, the Clear Water, Clean Water Act, um, 33 U.S., Code 1251, it establishes establishment of pollution control programs and the development of national recommendations for water quality. So basically uh, kind of recommending, recommending the uh, what kind of water they should be using and how to clean it and how to be able to use it. And then for the last one, the toxic substance control, uh, 15 U.S. Code 2601, it requires manufacturers and importers to test chemicals if EPA suspects risk. So basically, if you have any chemicals that you're bringing on or anything like that, making sure that uh, EPA doesn't think it's going to be a risk to the environment and mess up anything. You can go to the next slide. So for business and financial laws of the uh, project, it gets a little more specific. Um, mostly what you're looking at with the vessel and the, um, the staff is obtaining a business license, uh, specifically at a county office and state office and filing paperwork. Um, all of that kind of stuff includes tax information. Uh, tax information is important based on the state where the vessel will be located. And the vessel needs to be inspected by a local health department and uh, pass all requirements. Um, this goes for the vessel being inspected by the Coast Guard and uh, applying to Coast Guard regulations expect and um, uh, expected for its boating safety license um, because this is still at the heart a restaurant and needs to be, um, it needs to pass all requirements and business laws as a restaurant as well as it is a vessel on the sea. Uh, more specifically, um, a MDFV license needs to be obtained. This is a mobile food dispensing vehicle license. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but um, it just goes within state regulations to obtain the license so the operation can run. And uh, there needs to be a DBPR HR 7031 form for the vessel. Uh, this is provided by the Division of Hotels and Restaurants throughout the, uh, the country. Um, this is important uh, to keep the restaurant running. All more specific things that need to be held um, for regulations. Um, as I said before, uh, at the heart of the project, the vessel is a restaurant. It needs to obtain all the proper food licenses, uh, vendor permits, and uh, health inspections. And that is it 